I'm Phil Busey of Phil Busey Agronomy Consulting. Identification and Management of Common Landscape Weeds Identification of a weed is the mental process of recognizing a weed as a specific plant and assigning it a name by which it is commonly known. Technical characteristics of the leaves and flowers help in weed identification. Stepping back and looking at a weed from a distance will help site identification. Knowing more about a weed, such as its objectionable characteristics, can help you inform your clients and show you understand. Weed identification can be more than just naming a weed. It is the beginning to knowing everything about a weed, including how to manage it. Weed management involves choices in how to deal with weeds, whether to kill them, prevent them, reduce them, work around them, and knowing when to ignore them. All this depends upon identifying the weed first before one can make those choices. Are you with me so far? If so, let's go ahead and look at some common weeds and their identifying characteristics. You have certainly seen this weed. It seeds prolifically in the summertime. Looking at its parts, this plant's leaves are 10 or more times as long as wide. That means it's possibly a grass or a sedge. It has inconspicuous flowers in spikelets contained in comb-like racemes arranged like the fingers of one's hand, all coming from the same point. This is crowfoot grass. Also in the same family, with long linear leaves and parallel veins, you can see them here, is a weed that's not very pleasant to come into contact with. Besides not having showy flowers and having long leaves, its spikelets are arranged in spiny burrs. This weed is coastal sand burr, and other names include field sand burr and field sand spur. As I said, it's a grass. Grass-like, but not really a grass, is this plant. It, its leaves are more than 10 times as long as wide. It spreads by underground runners called rhizomes, and the inflorescence is burr-like. If you were to look at the top of this plant from the leaf whorl up, you would see that the leaves are arranged in three ranks, and if you twirled the uh, stem with your forefinger and your thumb, you'd feel a little bit of an edge to it. This is green kailinga, and that point about the edge is that sedges have edges. This is a sedge, a member of the Cyperaceae, which is a sister family of grasses. A broadleaf weed that we saw in the introduction has inconspicuous flowers which are showy if you look at, at them very close. The leaves are rounded and they are opposite. This is heartleaf dry mary, which we saw before. Another broadleaf weed is shown here. It has an attractive yellow flower. The flower has five yellow petals. The fruit is a capsule which explodes to shed its seeds. The leaves are heart-shaped and they occur in threes even though that's not obvious here. This weed, however, is common yellow wood sorrel, often called oxalis, because it is in the oxalidaceae family. A broadleaf weed that can be quite a nuisance has fruits that segment the fruit segments break into pieces and stick to clothing. The tiny violet flowers look almost like little butterflies. This plant is creeping beggarweed. It's in the Fabaceae or the legume family. Also in the same family is a low-growing weed that can be somewhat attractive, but it can be a real nuisance in law. The flowers are in heads. They too are miniature butterfly-like. The leaves have three leaflets. 
This weed is white clover. And you'll also notice a little bit of a marking on each leaflet, which is common. With its flower like a tiny hibiscus, this weed has a very strong tap root. Its stamens, which bear the pollen, form a tube between the five yellow petals. The leaves are alternate on the stem and the leaf margins are serrate. The plant is southern cida, which is in the Malvaceae or the Mallow family. A weed that goes by many names is this, with flowers and heads, leaf margins are serrate as in the last example, and the leaves are opposite. You can see that the leaves are opposite from above by noticing that they occur in pairs of equal size. This is matchweed in the verbane family. A tiny weed with a moundy appearance is this. It has tiny white flowers, star-like in appearance. The leaves are opposite. It is Old World Diamond Flower, which is in the Rubiaceae, or the coffee family. We'll come back to this family. Another important family is the Sunflower family, or the Asteraceae, of which this weed is a member. In common with other members of the sunflower family, the flowers are in heads, and they are showy, although they are very small. The leaves of this species are often narrow, which is not typical of the sunflower family. The leaves of this species are white and fuzzy looking because of many small hairs. This is narrow leaf cudweed in the Asteraceae or the sunflower family. It's very difficult to control. This little weed is cute, but it can be a real problem in the landscape. The flowers are in heads. The leaves emerge near the ground, initially in a basal rosette, and the leaf margins are serrate. It is Asiatic hawksbeard. That completes a set of 12 weeds for which we've learned in more detail some of the distinguishing characteristics. To continue this exercise in weed identification, we're going to use a diagnostic key that is on the web at idweed.com. So if you have a smartphone, you can access this now or when you get back to your place of work or home. idweed.com asks you simple choices between two weeds it provides you a picture of them and we're going to go through this exercise now to see some of the weeds again that we just saw to see some new weeds and to look at the contrasts in a dichotomous key. The first characteristic in separating out the weeds is whether the leaf veins are branched or parallel. Branched veins includes the broadleaf weeds. Parallel veined leaves include the grasses, the sedges, and a few exceptional situations such as the um, common creeping dayflower. If we took the left choice in the last slide, we would go into the section of the broadleaf weeds that have branched veins. And if we answer the question whether the leaves emerge from the ground or from erect stems, we can perhaps take the choice on the left that the leaves emerge from the ground. Merely by touching this particular screen on the left in your smartphone it takes us to another question asking in this dichotomous key that the, the leaves emerge from the ground either individually on the left or in a basal cluster on the right. And we'll take the left choice, noticing that the leaves arranged um, individually. And finally, as the last choice, we are asked whether the leaves emerging from the ground are attached in the middle or on the edge. The left choice is dollar weed. In that case, the dinner plate-like appearing leaf is attached to a stalk, which is called a petiole, that uh, is attached in the middle of the leaf. The 
plant on the right is dichondra. It has its leaf stalk attached on the edge of the leaf, as do most leaves. I'm going to run through a few more choices in this dichotomous key, just to make sure that you're comfortable with some of the alternatives, some of which we've discussed earlier, some of which not. Look at the leaf on the left. It is subdivided into three leaflets. We call this compound. The leaf on the right is not subdivided and it is attached directly to the stem. This is simple. In most cases, leaves are attached to the stem in two different ways. One is that they may be attached in opposite pairs as the Spanish needle plant on the left or they may be alternating as the pigweed plant on the right. Both plants here have opposite leaves, but the one on the left has leaves coming to an encircling cup at the base of the leaves. The one on the right has no encircling cup. This is an important family characteristic because of the plant on the left, which is broadleaf pusley, is in the coffee family or the rubiaceae. If you want to remember the coffee family, remember that it often has cups at the base of the opposite leaves, in contrast to the plant on the right, which has opposite leaves, but is green shrimp plant. A choice between the um, leaf margins might be whether the leaf margins are incised as in coat buttons on the left or merely serrated as in the uh, matchweed on the right. And notice again that matchweed has opposite leaves. IDweed.com uses the width of the leaves to distinguish among some of the plants with parallel veins. For example, the choice on the left, which is leaves more than a half an inch wide, is used to identify both the creeping dayflower that you see here, as well as a grass, basket grass. Dayflower is not a grass, obviously basket grass is. Most grasses will key out on the right with leaves less than a half an inch wide. The plant shown is Argentine bahia grass. An important distinction among types of grasses is growth habit. The plant on the left is considered a bunch grass because its leaves emerge from a single center, whereas the plant on the right that spreads across the ground is a running type grass. The plant on the left is smut grass, the plant on the right is a species of crabgrass. Spreading grasses include two very serious weeds, which are tropical signal grass on the left and crabgrasses on the right. They can be distinguished by the stiffness or softness, as the case might be, and the shininess or dullness of appearance of the leaves. So even without flowers or fruits, we can identify many different species of weeds. In the key on idweed.com, you'll be asked near the end of the key, if you step through some of the grasses, particularly those with spreading growth habits, whether the stolen thickness, which would be the above ground runner, is very thick, five millimeters thick or thicker, or sh more slender. That choice distinguishes on the left bahia grass from some other choices on the right, such as the St. Augustine grass that's shown here. If you take that latter choice, you'll be asked again a measurement of the width of this case, the, the leaves. If the leaves are relatively wide, and I should add roundish, it's typically St. Augustine grass on the left. If the leaves are narrower than seven millimeters wide, and it has a kind of a pointy tip to it, it would be centipede grass on the right. Well, maybe that's enough for now. I'm going to turn you back to our moderator, and I will see you again in a few minutes.